Hello fellow YouTubers, Mac in VR here and welcome to my channel. I'm asking the big question today, can Oculus Air Link cope with the notoriously difficult to run in VR racing sim, Assetto Corsa Competizione? Excited? I know I am, so let's get straight into it. And remember, we're born to respawn. Developed by Kunos Simulations, Assetto Corsa Competizione launched in May 2020, and unlike its big brother Assetto Corsa, which had a very wide range of cars and tracks, ACC concentrated solely simulating the 2018, 2019, and lately the 2020 Blanchpan GT series, which is great for me, as GT3 and Blanchpan are my absolute favourite racing series outside of British touring cars. It has seen various DLC packs since launch, my favourite being the British GT pack, which includes Snetterton, Donington and Alton Park racetracks. Alton Park be one of my all-time faves. Unfortunately for us VR enthusiasts, ACC does not run well in virtual reality, and though Kunos have improved the situation gradually over the past year, even my PC, which is fairly strong, cannot run it at a decent frame rate and keep the graphics looking pretty. But thanks to a neat little mod which has been posted on the ACC community forum on Reddit, I finally managed to get it running at a solid 90 frames per second and with the graphics ramped up to a mixture of high and epic, so now the game is playable in VR, my thoughts immediately turn to, can it run wirelessly? So step up Oculus and their brand spanking new Airlink feature, which was introduced in the version 28 update. I made a video about it here, so go check that out later. Can Airlink play ACC at 90 frames per second with the graphics set to high, epic, wirelessly, with manageable latency? The benchmark I'm going to play on my Valve Index, which will also be set to 90Hz refresh rate, and I'm going to do 10 hot laps around Donington Park race circuit, then a sprint race in the rain against 24 opponents. Why do I want it to be raining at Donington Park? Because I've got an Ayrton Senna complex and I still get chills thinking about that lap he did in the rain at Donington in the 1993 European Grand Prix. Okay? It will push ACC to its limits with all the rain effects and number of opponents. Once that's done, I'll fire up Oculus Airlink on my Quest 2 and repeat the process. So the question is, will I be able to match my hot lap times and will I be able to race competitively at Donington Park in the rain wirelessly? Are you excited? What do you think? Will Airlink be able to cope with this epic challenge? Get involved and comment down below. So what happened? My best hot lap on the Valve Index was My best hot lap on the Oculus Quest 2 using Airlink was. Pretty close, eh? I actually managed my fastest lap on the Quest 2 using Airlink, which was a complete surprise to me. So my conclusion here is that hot lapping using Airlink on the Quest 2 is just as effective as hot lapping on my wired Valve Index, and the inherent latency did not affect my performance. Impressed? I know I am. As for the race in the rain on the Valve Index, I started in 12th place, my best lap was, and finished the race in 7th place. On the Oculus Quest 2 using Airlink, starting from the same position, my best lap was, and I finished in, well I was 8th when I got punted off. <laughs> Which, to be honest, is irrelevant as it is the wireless playability and latency which I was testing here, not my prowess or lack of in the rain. So this one is purely down to how it felt racing in the rain at Donington Park and using Airlink, there was latency, you can't hide from that, but did it affect my performance? Well, apart from my crash, which clearly wasn't my fault, the experience was nearly as smooth as a Valve Index. I did have to fiddle with a few settings to keep the frame rate, but still very playable, which is pretty remarkable, I think. Oculus have nailed the latency and frame rate smoothing with their innovative asynchronous spacewalk technology. Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about ASW. While hot lapping 
or when deliberately stressing the wireless airlink by racing against 24 opponents in the rain at the notoriously fast and technical Donington Park circuit, there was never a moment when I felt impeded by latency or playing wirelessly. Airlink is pretty good. It's not perfect. As I said, I did have a, to tweak a few settings to hit that 90 frames per second, but then ACC is a notoriously difficult game to get running effectively in VR, and I think Airlink did a good job. For a long time now, everybody believed that sitting in a sim rig wearing a wired headset was the best way to get total immersion in VR. But now, I think the wireless freedom of Airlink pretty much matches that experience and, and maybe surpasses it because, well, no wires. I've also played on Project Cars 2 using Airlink and, well, PC2 looks great in VR and Airlink ran it peerlessly. And it's only going to get better as Oculus tweak Airlink to make it even more seamless and latency free. Just look at how far virtual desktop has come in the past year. Hmm. Speaking of virtual desktop, I wonder how it would fare in a direct head-to-head -head against Oculus Airlink. I feel another video incoming. What do you think after watching this video? Do you think Airlink is the new gold standard in sim racing? Are you going to stick to your wired setup? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Just as an aside, are you interested in the mod that I used to get ACC looking so good in VR? If enough people are interested, I may make a short video on how to download and install the mod. Plus, I'll include all my graphics settings and overclock settings for my CPU and GPU as well as a benchmark. Is that something you'd be interested in? Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button. The algorithm loves the likes and maybe do all the other stuff popping up around me now. You can also support the channel on Patreon or by going to my shop on tshirtstudio.com and purchasing some of my stylish merchandise. I have started streaming as well, so keep an eye on the community tab of my YouTube channel for times and dates. Last but not least, my stream buddy Surgical Gaming from Twitch TV has started his own YouTube channel, so go check it out here. Like and subscribe to help him get started. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.